morning before we uh, begin the symposium. Five minutes. How you doing? Uh, great. Good, good. Being fresh and renewed here in this part of the world. I also brought a uh, oh, do brought not those. disturb sign I for everybody. Those. That was wonderful. Yeah, it's funny what you can get at a hotel supply store. This is, uh, <laughs> yeah. is it, you know, I can make custom do not disturb signs. You're like, why not? Sure, you know. Hey, can I get one of those? Yeah, let's uh, absolutely. <laughs> he must have put one on his door. <laughs> Good to see you. When are you? Yeah, what a presentation. Oh, I, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's for, no, it's not for me. It's for what's here. Right. What Joe Diaz and Jose and um, everybody's done. Get this thing over. Sure. Mark, I kind of rushed you in here, but yeah. would you like to... Uh, partake in the uh, continental breakfast at all? I do not need to. I might grab some coffee, but that's okay. about it. I just want to make sure you know it's available before we get the show on the road. Okay. I think within five, ten, five minutes we're going to start. Five minutes? Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. We're going to do a round table. That always takes a few minutes. Okay, perfect. Should we pass these down? This is good. They got a little grandson. They're taking pictures. Oh my God, there it is. Paparazzi. Gave, gave a nice presentation. They are? They do. Turn this on. So that that's live. That puppy's good to go for whenever you're ready to pass it around. No, actually, when you speak, you can either hey, sit or stand right here. Hey, uh, are you? Yeah, you pick yeah, 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 yeah. So um, you're more comfortable. Go pop. Hey, uh, you're uh, we proud of me. I, I did okay. post on Facebook last uh, night. Or if you want to see right it, that's right. And oh, okay. got like a ton yeah. of so, uh, likes and stuff. So you were okay. right. So what's going to happen? I sucked it up in the room. Boom. Bump. 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 That was, uh, there's these things because I spent so much time there. I'm not going to do this round table. And I'm going to round table, just passing the wireless around. Okay. It'll come back to you guys. You got to You just take the wireless, stand up. Okay. For, for this for this part right now, because you can just just pass it around when you're done. Go ahead. Okay, well I'm gonna read Go ahead. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Well, that's. Well, here we are again. Seems like we just did this last year. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, ninth annual Petit Sarah Symposium here at Kincannon Vineyard. My name is uh, John Kincannon, and I'm the fourth generation vintner at Kincannon Vineyard. To my left is my father, Jim Kincannon, who many uh, refer to as the father of Petit Sarah, uh, ever since he first bottled the varietal back in 1961. 
I'd like to welcome those of you watching us via Ustream on the internet. We are broadcasting from my family's estate winery. We're located 45 miles east, due east of downtown San Francisco in the Livermore Valley wine country. This is a uh, landmark year for the Petit Syrah grape uh, as the wine industry is celebrating 50 years of this maverick grape. 50 years later, there are now 1,000 producers and growers of Petit Syrah, many of which are assembled today in the room in this room to share their knowledge and answer your questions so what i think i'd like to do right now is is go around this um, uh, very impressive gathering just have everybody introduce themselves well i'm jim and uh, i had something to do with john years ago but anyway uh, uh we're just gonna kind of we, we thank you so much for uh listening in today and also to have this wonderful group because it's not us it's you guys being here today uh, making these fantastic uh, petit sirahs throughout America. Thank you. Hi, I'm Deborah Shrest, and I um, got the privilege to work in marketing for Kincannon Vineyard. I'm Damon Musha, I also work in the uh, marketing department with uh, Kincannon Winery. Thanks. I'm Joe Lazara with Jazz Cellars Winery. We are located in San Francisco. I'm Greg Rich Tarek, Director of Marketing for Guglielmo Winery. I'm Alan DeWitt, winemaker at Guglielmo Winery in uh, Morgan Hill, California. George Guglielmo, Emilio Guglielmo Winery, Morgan Hill. Stephen Mitchell, I work with Kincannon Vineyard. Sandra Barrett with Wines Hidden Beauty. Bob Swain, winemaker for Partici Wine Cellars. John Schilter. I own a small barrel company up in Napa, Heritage Barrels. John Hottie, a winemaker at Bray Vineyards up in uh, Amador County. Dan Berger, Vintage Experiences, Santa Rosa. Let's see, Ken Wilson, Wilson, Wilson Farms and Vineyards in Clarksburg in the Sacramento Delta, and my wife, Shelly. Hi, I'm Derek Rogers with Vino Robles Winery down in Paso Robles. Hello, Eric Corbett with Crooked Vines, Stony Ridge Wineries here in Livermore. Jim Perry, uh, Eagle Ridge Vineyard in Livermore. Dave Gates, Ridge Vineyards. Pat Spangler, Roseburg, Oregon, Spangler Vineyards and Winery. Eric Cohen, uh, owner winemaker, Justice Gray's Vineyards. Laurie Daniel, I write for the San Jose Mercury News, among others. John Kenney, Acacia Winery, Livermore. Chris Sorensen, Acacia Winery, Livermore. Jim Ryan with the Wine Group. Julian Hollas, uh, winemaker, Concana Vineyards. Was immaculate timing. Uh, Shauna Rosenblum. Brian Gagan with Canton, Cooperage. Clark Smith, I make Petit Syrah for Diamond Ridge Vineyards. I write the postmodern winemaker for Wines and Vines magazine and I run the Best of Appalachian Awards for Appalachian America. Lane Montgomery, M2 Wines in Lodi. Uh, Mike McKay, McKay Cellars, Lodi. John Monick, grape maker, winemaker, so good wines, Modesto. Julio Covarrubias, Winter Vineyards. And Littlefield, wine marketing in Salt, Napa. Uh, Todd Arterburn, president of Fopiano Vineyards. Natalie West, Fopiano Vineyards, and the winemaker. Cheryl Wolhar, myvinespace.com. Laura Ness, I'm a freelance wine writer and a big Petit Syrah fan. John Aver, Aver Family Vineyards. Heather McGrail, McGrail Vineyards and Winery here in Livermore. Colin Craner, Nottingham Cellars. Jeff Craner, Nottingham Cellars. Bob Bialy, Robert Bialy Vineyards in Napa. Steve Hall, I'm the uh, winemaker there. Doug Nauer, working at Treasury Wine Estates. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Wilfred Wong, uh, retailer, uh, BevMo, uh, California and Arizona. Steve Heimoff, Wilfred's younger brother and California Bureau Chief at Wine Enthusiast. Matt Moy, Vincent Arroyo, Calistoga. Thomas Coyne and Thomas Coyne Winery in Livermore. 
Brian Mom, Las Pesitas Vineyards in Livermore. I'm Joe DeClue from Paso Robles with Clava Cellars and Roberts Vineyard Services. Victor and Beth Edwards, Edwards Vineyard and Cellars, San Diego County, Ramona Valley. Dane Stark, Page Mill Winery, Livermore. Chris Graves, Ruby Hill Winery in Pleasanton here in Livermore Valley. <clears throat> Sean Quinn, Gerard Winery, Napa Valley. Ellen Landis, sommelier, wine writer, and owner, Landis Shores Ocean Front Inn, Half Moon Bay. Uh, Mark Oldman, uh, wine writer from New York City. Should I stir things off, or do you want to? Well, I'd love to introduce you, Please Mark. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had the pleasure of uh, getting to know Mark a little bit last night, and uh, it's certainly my honor to, uh, to introduce him as our keynote speaker today. Uh, Mark is uh, passionate about helping wine enthusiasts uh, jostle the jaded and slay the snooty. Uh, Mark Oldman is one of the country's leading wine personalities. His uh, signature style was best summed up by Bon Appetit magazine as wine speak without the geek. I love that. And uh, by Publisher Weekly as the index mix of wine connoisseur, showman, and everyday dude. Who doesn't like an everyday dude? I love that. <laughs> Mark's new book is uh, Oldman's Brave New World of Wine, uh, is the ultimate anecdote for those craving new taste sensations. It plots a course to pleasure, value, and adventure beyond wine's usual suspects, focusing on that holy grail of wine lovers. It's really an insider's guide to wine at a moderate cost and maximum appeal. I read the Petite Sirah chapter last night. It was great, Mark. Mark is a lead judge in the PBS television series, The Winemakers and is in the middle of filming the show's next season in France's Rhone Valley. He is also a regular on Martha Stewart radio show, Living Today, program on Sirius Satellite Radio. Mark has written several top publications, some of which include Food and Wine Departures and Travel and Leisure, and has chosen all of the wine picks for the 15 million annual readers of Every Day with Rachel Ray. He regularly speaks to sold out audiences at the country's top gastronomic festivals. Mark began his wine journey in 1990 when as a student he founded Stanford's Wine Circle, a popular university club hosting tastings with California wine legends. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Stanford University with a BA, MA, and a JD. Those are a lot of uh, letters. <laughs> Mark is long been keenly interested in innovating within the areas of education and consumer advocacy. He makes his home in New York City, and we are truly honored to have him with us today in Livermore, California as our keynote speaker. Please welcome Mark Oldman. Thank you. Thank you, John and Jim and Joe, Jose, everyone else. Uh, I'm going to make this as painless as possible. This is early in the morning, and I know you have a lot to get to. I'm honored to be before such an august kind of group of vintners and marketers and journalists. Uh, you have my book in front of you, my, my latest book, and I guess what I'm going to talk about today is what motivated the book as it relates to the marketing opportunities for Petit Syrah, especially from my point of view, a wine writer's point of view on the East Coast. Um, because I'll tell you kind of how I see things from there and maybe some innovations that will get your minds firing and, and be somewhat provocative in a good way um, when it comes to how you get Petit Syrah, which is already established uh, a terrific base uh, to the next level of recognition. Uh, I'll say something about uh, Joe, and that is, you know, I was telling her last night, it occurred to me uh, while I was talking about it, there really isn't another varietal that has this kind of singular force out there kind of mediating and the hub between writers and vintners and marketers someone is smart and kind of intelligent who gets it I know there are big associations relating to wine regions and and also to certain grape types but what y'all have here that's my one little pee into uh, southern southern world I'm dating a woman from uh, the south so she taught me y'all 
Uh, but basically, that's what you have. You have this kind of tight group uh, based around what you call, John, a maverick grape. And I think that's really interesting. And, and I love all good grapes, but the maverick grapes are what I made the subject of my new book, A Brave New World of Wine. And that's because, you know, a couple years ago, when I wrote my first book, uh, the section, Secret Alternatives, really resonated with my audience. Uh, they love, you know, kind of the basics about wine and what's Cabernet all about, and what's Pinot Noir all about, and Chardonnay, but it's those secret alternatives, it's those functional substitutes that I think is one of the big trends out there that what people are longing for, um, whether it could be from just a, you know, I'm out to dinner with my friends, everyone knows Cabernet Sauvignon, everyone now knows Malbec, I'm going to order Petit Syrah because that's cool and that's different. Or it could be because it offers a value, because you might pay a comfort premium for a Bordeaux or a certain Napa Cabernets, but Petit Syrah might be uh, uh, more affordable. So there are a number of reasons why people are looking in this brave new world of wine. I mean, if you, I know you're so immersed in wine that it's sometimes difficult to forget that you know most consumers, most casual drinkers, my friends, my mom, my sister, they go to a wine store, and especially in New York, uh, or on the East Coast, you know, the further you get from California, the more you see this great diversity. It's almost this wild multiculturalism of grapes and wine types out there. A couple generations ago, you know, it was kind of, you had your California wine, your Bordeaux, your Burgundy, and now it's Greek wine and New Zealand wine and Portuguese wine and Argentine wine. And it's daunting and it's exciting to the consumer, but then it's, you know, also kind of, it, from your point of view, it's like, okay, how do I cut through the clutter? How do I get my message out? And I think Joe and the rest of you have done just this wonderful job with, you know, P.S. I love you, kind of giving this kind of affability and uh, lovability to what is this maverick grape. We'll talk about maybe uh, the mindset you can take, again, to take it to the next level. As John said, before I started focusing on wine full time, I had a startup, um, and uh, it was called Vault.com, and uh, we were basically, how, how can I put it, like a Zagat restaurant guide for large companies. Um, that's not a great uh, elevator pitch, but let's say you want to work for a big company, whether it's a bank or a consulting firm or a law firm. You would go to my website, and at, our, at its largest, it was 110 people, you, you'd go there, and our editors would tell you about what life is really like at these companies. Um, how are women treated? How much will you get paid in your first year versus your third year? What's the Chicago office like versus the Pleasanton office versus the Los Angeles office? And all these company cultural details. And this was something new and different. And I'd like to think it was like a really good product out there. But when we were starting about 10 years ago, we didn't have marketing money. And we certainly couldn't buy full page ads in the Wall Street Journal and so forth. So we really had to be scrappy. We had to be mavericks. We had to think like a startup, the startup that, that we were. And I'll tell you just a funny story about that, um, about messaging. And this will kind of lead into some of the uh, possible messages that I've seen that could maybe get you guys to, to the next level or get this wonderful grape, this plummy, peppery, spicy grape that is Petit Syrah that Jim uh, was one of the great pioneers for. So we had no money at Vault. And we had this kind of, the internet's first company-specific selection of, of message boards. So this was long before Twitter and Facebook. And you can go to Vault and you could talk about your company. And this was kind of unusual in the world of uh, job seeking and um, HR and almost unnerving to certain HR people because the HR people would think, uh-oh, you know, now my employees can really talk about what's going on at my company and I, I don't know if I like that. Uh, so, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I was like, you know, how do we get this message out? How do we kind of codify in our marketing messages something that everyone can relate to? Because that was our consumer base. You know, the, not the nerd 
or the expert, but the casual job seeker. So I'm like, what are people doing on Vault that they're normally doing kind of online? What's the natural impulse? I'm like, well, I guess they're talking about their jobs, you know, but they're, they're, they're kind of, for lack of a better word, bitching. They're, they're bitching about their boss. You know, if you've seen the movie Horrible Bosses, it, it, that's, there's kind of this human impulse. And as a boss, I know that all employees, whether justified or not, they kind of do that sometimes. They kind of bitch about their boss. So we created that slogan, no money spent on this. I, I dreamed it up. And then what I did in New York is I hired one of those billboard trucks and we drove it around New York, giant billboard, and it said, bitch about your boss at vault.com. And I remember riding in the truck and everyone from police officers to investment bankers, they saw it and they laughed. You know, it was kind of like the resonance that P.S. I Love You has. People have affection towards it. And, but this was really kind of in your face in a New York way. But we were, you know, times were tough. We needed to get funding by VCs. We needed to cut through the clutter, kind of like what you guys need to do when it comes to this brave new world of wine types out there. So the, the truck's going around. Now, cut to about two days later, I'm on the phone with the Wall Street Journal, and the reporter's asking me about career um, topics. And then the reporter goes, is there anything else you need to tell me about the career space? And I very innocently said to the reporter, well, um, you know, some of my friends at these investment banks say they can't get into the Vault website, that maybe the, these banks are blocking access to the Vault website. 